Maybe the audio is fixed. Maybe it's not. So you're looking at like a, you can see if it's recording. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. well, yesterday there was a slight echo on your end when I logged yeah. in this morning. <clears throat> this morning. Oh, good. Good time for something to land in my throat. Uh, my mic was not being recorded. So that is now okay. fixed. I was on a different computer yesterday and it's not the computer I've ever used for this. So it's possible it just wasn't configured correctly. But there I'm back go. on the computer I had been using, if that makes sense. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Whatever. Get what you pay for. Uh, the big thing, at least in my brain, so we have ARM devices. That's next mm -hmm. week, right? Yeah, one more week, Tuesday. And then there's a report out from uh, the MediaTek, which is sort of a... Mm -hmm. If you are if you follow this, this stuff, you know who they are. But to the general consumer, no idea who MediaTek is. They're lo kind of a low-end yeah. chip maker. Like yeah, a, like a general purpose company that just makes chips for everything and... I think a lot of Amazon devices have MediaTek yeah. processors, like if, right? If you're building a generic Android tablet, who you're running, probably a MediaTek. Yeah, thing. this is what AMD was in the beginning. Like if you yeah. back in the '90s, like if you got an AMD, you were like getting a, a cheaper version of whatever Intel was selling at the time. Yeah. So MediaTek will reportedly release ARM an ARM chip for PCs in 2025. The bigger thing here is not that, at least not in my brain. If yeah. you went back, it might have been a year now, maybe six months, eight months, 12 months, pick your month, whatever. There was a report that, hey, AMD and uh, NVIDIA were considering making ARM yeah. chips that would also be coming in potentially. So that, that's been repeated. So Reuters has reported that exact set of companies as mm -hmm. well. So Reuters now has outed, if you will, AMD, MediaTek, and NVIDIA. And NVIDIA and MediaTek, interestingly, are partnering on NVIDIA's chips, but MediaTek, according to Reuters, is also doing its own thing. Samsung also has been rumored, by the way, although that hasn't come out recently. And yeah, they've all, uh, this is all Reuters, but uh, confirmed this kind of report we've had for a couple of years now that there's some exclusivity arrangement between Microsoft and Qualcomm, as there is, I think, for Copilot plus PCs mm -hmm. for some unknown period of time. The time window for that or whatever you call that the window has shifted because i don't think we really know for sure but i thought it was supposed to end at the end of last year and then it was like the end of this year and now they're talking it might be into 2025 so the timing on this is late 2025 but you know uh, ces is happening in january i'd be surprised if that wasn't a time frame for these companies to start talking about it maybe yeah i don't know I if ifa would be yeah, too September, soon. or oh, this September you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, it's probably too soon. Because IFA is usually like, hey, this is what's launching for the holiday season. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll see. The uh, if if they could somehow get Texas Instruments in there, and they could you could write a blog post that says the band is getting back together. And Brad, for those who don't know, is referring to the original set of ARM chips that were supposed to ship for Windows RT. Yep, yeah. Texas. Yeah, it was MediaTek, Nvidia, and Qualcomm actually. Yeah. Yeah. But only NVIDIA. It was only the one chipset. Yes. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, NVIDIA. Yeah, I would love... Like, the curiosity part of my brain is I just love to see what NVIDIA could do with... With graphics, a, a, yeah. A CPU, effectively, right, for the ARM. I um, Look, Intel just killed hyper-threading in its uh, mobile-focused yeah. chips. It, it's not clear they'll do that for the higher-end chips, but the theory there is that single-core processing is more important than multi-core because most people on a laptop just like on a tablet are just doing like the one thing they're not you know putting windows everywhere and doing all this stuff at the same time right so mm -hmm. that's i guess better for that that kind of thing um well the more interesting thing yeah again at least in my brain here is if there's one company on the planet at least as of right now that could make arm gaming a thing mm -hmm. it's nvidia although i you know there's some interesting stuff with the arm, arm gaming, even right now on Qualcomm, yeah. right? The uh, aside from emulator improvements, there's that uh, there's an NPU specific. I'm already forgetting. I think it's called Auto SR um, that you only get with Qualcomm chips right now. I mean, that will change over time. Uh, Microsoft is building into Windows 11 the ability. Am I doing this right? I might have these reversed. I'm sorry. They might. There, there's there's Auto Super. It's called Super Resolution. So there's some kind of capability in that will just be in Windows 11. Which is probably part, you know, part of DirectX, right? I think that one, yeah, that one requires the developer to buy in 
the auto SR, I'm, I might re <laughs> I'm not reversing this, is the thing that will run on these Qualcomm things. And it's just going to happen automatically. And like at launch, there there's 11 uh, titles they'll specifically support. But there's also a, there's a website you can go to where there's actually hundreds of uh, games that will actually kind of work fine uh, as well. And so, you know, we, we saw some last month, right? I think we're in April, whenever that was at the Qualcomm mm -hmm. press event. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, it's hard to know what to think of this. Like there are certain games like, um, I just get the name of these things. Like there's that race asphalt, whatever yeah, yeah, those yeah, games. For, yeah. For whatever reason, that kind of game like runs on anything and looks really good, you know? And one of the games they showed off was sort of that kind of a game. It was a, you know, a racing game of some kind, but they also, I, they, one of them was control, which is a kind of a, mm -hmm. 3D or third person shooter, I guess. Um, the, the part that's missing, though, at least mm -hmm. as of right now, is you cannot pair an ARM chip from any manufacturer with something like a, a GTX or RTX 4090 mobile chipset or anything like that. Yep. So you would need NVIDIA to <laughs> enable that. And Well, that's one approach, right? The other one is NVIDIA builds an ARM chip with its own D GPU type stuff built on the silicon, right? The, yeah, the no, other, the other approach. Like that yeah. would be super interesting. So yeah, if you're interested in gaming, it's true that, uh, or just not not just gaming, dude. Like yeah, I mean, Blender, um, any high end uh, video gaming. editing, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I mean, so yeah. I mean, there there are specific workloads that are being optimized for the MPU. Very specific things inside of like a video editing app or whatever. But just general video editing and you know performance, whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is where I think the Intel AMD stuff is going to have a an advantage you know for some time and but yeah nvidia's entry into this market could change that yeah interesting i mean we're like we're so terrible like we're uh less than a week away from the first gen of this stuff shipping and we're already looking at the next stuff I we know. don't even know anything about but like that's i mean maybe that's human nature i don't know it's uh i'd like look intel might figure this out I, i've got I'm, I'm in the middle of writing something about this um it's not Arrow Lake, the new Lunar Lake uh, processors. And I, there's something happening at Intel right now that I think is very interesting on the client side for Windows, right? I can't speak to the data center stuff. I, I really do think ARM is the future for everything, but they're, they're finally, after years of claiming they got the message, they, they've clearly gotten the message. They've changed architectures on these chips three or five times even in the last several years. Like it's amazing how much it's changed. And um, in the old days, I, I don't know. It was mostly just about, you know, remember eighth gen, they added the core, like they mm -hmm. doubled the cores, right? And it was like, oh my God, that's incredible. You know, um, I, the stuff they're doing right now is actually rather incredible. And it, I hope it's not too late for them in a way, but whoever wins out or whatever wins out, or maybe it's just, we have now three options and they're all great. Who cares? But um, I, there is a world in which Intel you know, figures it out. But the last gen integrated GPU on the first gen mm -hmm. <laughs> Ultra Core chips was a significant improvement and and could can play games. Like it's not, you know, all games, not super high res, whatever. Um, this version, again, is a, a, the same kind of leap forward over that, which is like, what? You know, the MPU is finally in the right place. That wasn't even close before. And then the GPU part is, uh, CPU part rather is, uh, you know, standard, whatever, load, double digit maybe high single digit improvement but um you know the architecture is completely different and the uh the way they handle cores is completely different the hyper threading is gone um i don't know it's interesting I, I'm, I'm i'm still i i i still have more reading to do to understand fully what they've done but yeah uh, i feel like they finally got there yeah. or, or, or in the, the best thing that can happen for the consumer is that arm does take off if it could just get a modest amount of market share that really forces Intel and AMD to some capacity. That's what it takes, yes. Yeah. Right. Then the consumer wins. Yep. This is when we talk about antitrust. Um, one of the core kind of points of antitrust is that a business can exist as if it does not have competitors, right? If And Intel has kind of behaved that way, right? And they I, arguably, they don't have a monopoly, but well, but may, maybe under certain circumstances they do. I feel like Intel is finally responding to some market realities that it should have responded to many years ago and could have, you know, would they have dominated the market more than they do now? It's hard to say, but they would have been better positioned for the future. And it's weird to me they never addressed this stuff. So they're doing mm -hmm. it now. 
And yeah, you're seeing the impact of uh, competition. This is this is important. You're important.